Hey everybody, it's Mark again, and uh, if you work on cuckoo clocks all the time, you will go cuckoo. So every once in a while, I have to work on a different clock, because I get tired of working on cuckoo clocks all the time. And so uh, uh, today we're going to be working on a, uh, a ship's bell clock that I purchased before Christmas and it's been sitting around waiting for me to uh, to get to it. I've never worked on a ship's bell clock before so this is going to be an experience for me. I hope you stick around and uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button because it's free to do so. Here we have a Waterbury ship's bell clock. Here it says manufactured by Waterbury Clock Company, USA. Jewel movement made in USA. I believe that is a porcelain dial. And so, um, I don't know anything about this clock. Like I said, I've never owned one before, but I had the chance to get one. And uh, I got this one. Here you push this button to open up the uh, the front. So let's get to get to working on it. It did come with a key. The springs are good, but I want to take out the movement so I can see what's going on with it. Because it's been wound up, it should tick away. I'm sure it's dirty. Original hands. The hand don't want to come off, so uh, I don't know if you take out the movement by taking these three screws out. Again, I've never worked on one of these clocks before, so uh, I'm going to take these three screws out. If I screw it up, oh well, it's my clock. There's not really any pictures that you could take right now because you can't see nothing. And I don't think that is going to take out the movement. And I could be wrong because I don't... I didn't get no pressure on those. No, it takes off this. I'm going to put the hand back on and see if the gong activates.
I already go into warning. I went into warning again, but the gong's not activating. There are some more screws on the front here. So I'm going to take those off. Nice solid brass. I don't think these little three screws are going to do anything either, but you know, I've been wrong before. There we go. Pushing it from the rear. Oh, something's going on. the movement now let's see what happens when I Let me put the hand back on and see if anything works. Gives in a warning, but nothing is is going on. Here it shows some patent numbers starting on. Thirteen September, I would think that would be eighteen ninety eight, and the last one is twenty four May nineteen ten. So the clock is made after nineteen ten. Get a hair escapement on it, which I don't like. But I need to take the dial off. And that looks like these four nuts will take the dial off. So let me take those the the four nuts off. 
got the four nuts off so now I should be able to take the the dial off and why this hour hand don't want to come off Air it's taken away, but the well, started to take away, but the uh, movement is really filthy. As you can see, there's a bunch of crap all over it. So, uh, I need to take some pictures because pictures are your friend. And you could take this dial off by undoing these little bitty screws. There's four of them. But I'm not going to take the dial off because... From experience in the past, you could break the dial even more. So I'm going to leave it just like it is. Maybe wipe the dial down with some glass cleaner when I'm all ready. After you take your pictures, before you start taking a movement apart, you have to let down the power or it will hurt you and it will hurt the movement and you don't want to do that. This is called a click. You got one on both sides. Here's the um, time side power. Here's the I take that back. Here's the strike side power because on this particular movement, the strike system is on the right. And here's the time side power. And I'm going to prove that right now. I'm going to take the power off on the time side. Now you can purchase these and if it works, there's a little bit of slop in it, a little bit of slop in it. I could use this, but it's got a little bit of slop in it. What you do, you start by winding it up and then you move. Let me get to it so you can see it. You start by winding it up and then you move the click out of the way. And then you release it in your hands. And when I took the power off of this, the skatement wheel no longer rotates. If you don't have these, you can make one out of a broom handle, a dowel, whatever. And I have a video on this. And what you do, you shove the key down in that slot. You do the same thing. You start by winding it up. And you move the click out of the way. And then you slowly release that dowel in your hands. I made this one back in 1999 and I still have it. I just recently got this one 
at an auction. It was in a box of a bunch of clock parts that I bought. And this was in the auction. These things come in three different sets. And so the holes are for different keys. This one works for every clock that I have. So anyway, the power is down. And so now I could start taking this clock apart. And the first thing that I want to take apart is this. I hate these um, um, spring escapement systems. I seem to always tear them up. Now, if I'm careful, I could take this plate off. That way I could see how it's put together underneath. It goes something like that, but I was having trouble putting them all in the pivots because the pivots are extremely dirty, and I'm going to show you. You see how dirty these pivots are? They're extremely dirty. And so because they are dirty, I was having trouble putting the pivots in the holes. You see how filthy that toothpick is? The very end of the toothpick is filthy, but anyway, that's because the the pivots are full of grease and grime and everything else. There, I cleaned it out a little bit more. But... I'm going to set that to the side and 
see what I'm going to take apart next. We'll just finish this side. These are to lock down the uh, these little ratchet wheels. Not uh, that's the wrong name. I can't think of the name. But look how oily your clock should never be this oily. They went too far oiling this clock. Now for the back side. Take the um, snail off here. And typically, uh, a snail is on the front side, but not in this case. Man, it's awful tight. And that's probably why it wasn't gonging because this is way too tight I bet if I put it back together now it will work just fine you see how that reaction is in fact well Let me put the Rack back on. And I'm going to put One of these click 
lights back on. So stand by. I put the uh, strike side section back together. And I think if I wind this up, as long as none of the other parts have to be on this thing, I might have put the uh, click on wrong. Or got the wrong screw. Like I said, I have never worked on one of these before. But this is a um, true ship's bell clock. And that's why I wanted it. So we'll see what happens when I wind it up now. Ta -da. Ta -da. Whoever worked on this before had this screw way too tight, but because the movement is oily, I'm still taking it apart to um to clean it so again letting down the uh power is a must giving it a little wind moving the click out of the way letting the dowel release in my hand And then you know that it has no power on it. I just hope when I put it back together that I can put the hairspring on correctly. That's the only thing that I don't like about these clocks is the hairspring they work great in watches but because I don't have my eyesight anymore even with this magnifying glass I got it's hard for me to see what I'm doing especially over a camera Minute Will with Minute Pinion. Now the snail should come off. We'll go ahead and take the gong off. I 
it has all kinds of crud all over it. Time to get more pictures. Taking pictures as you go is a wise thing. Take as many pictures as you need to um, to get the clock put together. I still haven't figured out how to get this thing off. The snail pulled right off. It just, and there's this little bearing that was inside of it. I'm not for sure what that bearing is for. So this wheel should come off now. What is typically known as a minute wheel with minute pinion. One of these wheels got to come off in order for the movement to come out. Either this wheel or this wheel. And I'm thinking this wheel myself. So... I'm going to check and see if there's a pen in it. This was a pain in the butt to get off. And I bent the, uh, the gear getting it off. But that I can straighten out. And you see it's a little bit warped but like I said that I can straighten out but it was a pain in the butt to get off it was really on there after taking more pictures it's time to take more parts off This part I can leave on, but this part I'm going to take off. So now, and this being the cam, which is compressed in there. Um, compression fitting just like on a cuckoo clock I think I could take the rest of it off but I'm gonna use these 
little movement stance and see if I could take it off to take a picture. The screw is loose. And there we go. Time to take another picture. I said this is the uh, wheel that I bent a little bit trying to get it off, but I could straighten that out. I've done it before by putting this in my drill and tapping on this after I put it on my metal block. But I probably, because I'm gonna put it in my drill, I probably need to take this bridge off to do so. if that bridge would come off. Yeah, that'll work. Here I have the gear in my drill. And I'm going to lay the part that's bent on this block. And if you don't believe me it's bent, let me show it to you real fast. see a wobble so hopefully when I'm done there won't be no wobble looking better already
and it doesn't take a lot of hammering. And so uh, I think that's good. So now it's time to put all these parts in all Thersonic and get all this grease and crap off of. I hope you're all liking this video. And the mainspring barrels are marked T per time and S per strike. Uh, it's probably marked by somebody who repaired these in the past. The porcelain dial is in fairly good shape. There's a little mess up right here and right here. And it's starting to crack here. But for something that is over 100 years old, it's in pretty good shape. So I got the thing out of the cleaner, I pegged all the holes, and uh, I got the time side going here. Now the strike side is going to be a little bit different. I tried cleaning up the movement. I used uh, semi-chrome. And it made it look like crap. So I got out my Dremel. It didn't make it look any better. So I got out some steel wool. Made it look better. But it's still not perfect. I'm going to... I. I'm out of blades on um, brass uh, Dremel <clears throat> brushes, so I'm going to purchase more brushes, but however, I broke a lot of the uh, springs. these things right here they go on the other side and so I'm gonna have to order some but as you can see back when I used to repair pocket watches I, stand by let me put on some gloves I don't want fingerprints all over this movement. And I don't typically wear gloves. But I don't want to put fingerprints all over this movement. And so anyway, back when I used to repair pocket watches, railroad pocket watches. Are designed to be running when you do several types of uh, tilts. As you can see, this thing is 
running that way and it's running that way and it's running that way and it's running this way anyway it's similar to what a railroad pocket watch would be um, was designed to do as I said this before you can read it in the pocket watch there's sugar anyway there's a pocket watch book that has to do with the value of pocket watches it's a really famous book I got one and it's got history of pocket watches in there and you can read about pocket watches in there but there was a several um, train crashes back before they designed a railroad pocket watch and it's because the conductor in the station master trains were uh, pocket uh, watches were set at different times but anyway the thing is running I have to put the um, strike train together now and I told you wrong the S and the T the S is on the time side this is the time side train the T is on the strike side so I don't know whether they uh, messed up or what and I just noticed something the strike side is not going to run that well there's a broken tooth right here so I'm going to have to find another and that's why I say that I'm not an expert and a lot of people say that I am an expert I'm not an expert if I was an expert I would have the equipment to make this I know how to do it um, for the most part but I don't have the equipment I've never done it I've seen it done the general clock repair VHS tape that I bought back in 1999 and you can purchase them off of eBay Bruce Rasman Rasmussen general clock repair in that video presentation he shows you how to make these you take a piece of brass stock and you um, solder it to this plate and then you would cut it out using a drill I can never pronounce that word correctly jewelry saw to cut the new teeth but anyway I might get lucky and I might skip that tooth but I don't believe so but like I said the uh, the time side is running well I'm trying to see if it's going to skip that tooth
We're coming up on it. As you can see, it is right here. And it's hitting the lantern pinions. That's what these are called lantern pinions. And the barrel just moved right then. And did you see the barrel jump? It's because of that broken tooth. So I'm probably going to have to um, see if I can find another um, spring barrel this diameter that many teeth. Anyway, I hope you are liking this video, and uh, I'm going to put it back together as, as good as I can, because I don't want all these pieces all over the place. But that's just part of uh, it's just part of clock repair. You can't really do. Uh, sometimes you get lucky, and sometimes you don't. But anyway, in the process of trying to clean this thing up, I broke this spring right here, which. Um, that's got to do with the. Uh, lift lock lever to lift it back up after it falls down and I broke this spring right here which also have to do with this lever right here that helps it strike and this spring right here which helps bring the rack down so I need to order three springs But the uh, strike is working. If I was to move the uh, rack, but because it doesn't have those springs on it, it's not working that well. So I have to order some springs. They're available through Time Savers. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I just wanted to put the movement back together before I put it inside the case. And that way I keep everything together. And leave me some comments. Again, this is the first time that I have ever touched and worked on a ship's bell clock. So I think I did 
pretty good. Um, I will say that the schema mechanism it's very hard to see. This magnifying glass along with this magnifying glass this magnifying glass will do it because it goes up to 10, 10 times the power. And I could see, but everything has to be about three or four inches away from your face. That's, but that's just uh, how people who re repair pocket watches for a living, that's what they're doing all day long. It's putting something three, four, five inches away from their face. And I used to do that without glasses. That's how times has changed for me. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And may God bless each and every one of you. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Maybe I'll get back to uh, repairing a cuckoo clock. You just never know what I'm going to do. Whatever I feel like doing. I've got all kinds of clocks that are in my collection. And um, I've got a triple chime clock that I bought that I want to repair. I've got some uh, other clocks uh, that I want to repair. But you just never know what I'm going to do. So uh, stay tuned for the next video. And I hope you enjoyed this. And may God bless each and every one of you.